Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can stay centered on a moving object inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So here we have a small bird that is going to jump around across this shot. So if I click to random areas of the timeline, you'll see that the bird just changes its position basically every second of the video. So this would be a decent candidate if we want to focus on the bird's head or some other object. So what I'm going to do is go to frame zero. So for a manual setup of this kind of effect, there's two things we're going to need. One is to zoom in on the object, because if we don't use any zoom, but we move the position of the clip around, then you're going to see black edges. So for instance, if I go to frame zero here, and let's pull the Y position down so that the bird's head can be centered, we'll also adjust the X position here, moving it roughly in there to the center as well. Then in the preview window, you can see that we have these black edges. So at least a little bit, we're going to need some level of zoom for our video clip. So I'm just going to take the zoom and I'm going to bump it up to 1.3. Very likely, depending on where the object moves across the shot, we may need to zoom in further at a later point, but we'll just leave it as 1.3 for now. So in order to adjust the position across time to stay centered, we need to take this position and then keyframe it for animation. So over here on the right hand side, you'll see a little gray diamond. If you click on that, that sets a keyframe point. So we're setting a keyframe at frame zero. So that's going to be the starting position for our clip. Now we can jump any number of frames into the future. And as things are right now, it's still going to maintain that position because we haven't set any other keyframes. So as soon as you start adding two or more keyframes that have different values, Resolve will animate between those properties. So here at frame 22, we can see the birds made its first jump and we would want to recenter the position by adjusting the Y value. So in order to create the second keyframe, we just need to change the value of the property that's already keyframed. So I will take the Y position and I will boost it up here until the bird's head is centered vertically. So when we do that, you'll see that the keyframe diamond turns red, indicating that there is a second keyframe there. You can also see these left right arrows to go between the keyframes if you ever need to adjust the values. But as I previously mentioned, you can see here that since the bird got a little bit more off center, we have the black area again. So we may need to zoom in a little bit further. So that can be a problem if your object gets too close to the edge, you may need to zoom in more than you'd really like. Now what you could optionally do is to keyframe the zoom as well so that when it gets close to the edge you just zoom in a lot more than normal and then you can zoom back out as the object is closer to the center in the original clip. As long as you keep those black edges out of the frame you should be good to go. So in the end I'm not going to do that for this final clip but I will keyframe temporarily at this frame 22 for the zoom we can go to frame zero for the zoom as well, and we can reset this back to 1.3. So now if we hit play, the shot will zoom in again, keeping the black edges outside of the frame. But because we're keyframing the zoom, we don't need to stay that zoomed in all of the time. If you prefer to stay at a consistent zoom though, then just hit reset on this zoom button, getting rid of all the keyframes. And I'm just gonna type in 1.45 or so. And then that can just be a flat value for the rest of this clip. It's up to you whether you want the extra camera movement or not. So one way that we can see all the frames for our position is to click on the bottom right section of our clip in the timeline that we're editing. So down here, we open that up. You can see all the keyframes for the transform. And you can actually snap between them as long as you have snapping enabled in the timeline as well. So that can be another handy way to navigate between your keyframes. But at this point, we just need to keep repositioning the clip at any point where the bird is no longer in the center. So I'll go a little bit further here. I also zoom in on the timeline so that it's... Uh... And we can see here the bird is now in the bottom left. So I'm going to adjust the position once again, getting right around there. You can see that edge problem once again. So we need to increase the zoom or animate it just for these moments and have it temporarily increase the value. So let's go a little bit further, change the value. Let's recenter it again. Let's put one more at three seconds here and then recenter it once again. So for the sake of time, I'm going to cut the rest of the clip. We'll only make this three seconds for this quick tutorial. So now we just need to go back in and edit for these three seconds. So for the areas between the keyframes, 
we'll likely see that it is still off center. If we go to the start and hit play, it is going to roughly track the position of the bird, but not as accurately as we may like. The more keyframes that you add, uh, the more accurate it's going to end up being. So I'll go halfway in between each one and we'll just adjust the position once again, recentering it. Let's go right here. And I'm going to recenter it. Right here is pretty good, but I'll adjust the value just a bit. And then let's set a value for here as well. So now that we've doubled the number of keyframes, if we go to the start and hit play, it should be a lot more accurate. You know, I would actually say that's pretty decent. There's a couple areas where it's maybe a little choppy, like right here, for instance. So wherever you need, you can just add an extra keyframe. But you probably don't actually need to add much more at this point to get a pretty good result. It's going to depend a lot on how much movement there really is in the shot. So just watch it back and see if there's any problems. Right here you can see we have the edge thing a little bit. So I'm going to increase the zoom just a tad more, making sure that there's no black space after we make all of our edits. If you want to change the value of any particular position, then just snap to the keyframe and you'll know you're on the keyframe because the keyframe diamond will be red in the top right. And then you can change the value for that position. So if you need to make a little bit of an adjustment, because you don't have it quite right the first time, then it should be pretty easy to do that. Just snapping to the keyframes or using these left right arrows. But pretty much at this point, we have the result we're looking for. The shot stays centered on the bird's head or whatever object you're trying to work with. And that's pretty much going to be it for doing a manual centering across a shot. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. I hope all of you got something out of this video and I'll see you in my future video content.